All right, turn to Exodus chapter 3. Um, I want you to see what I think is one of the coolest passages in the Hebrew Bible. The real Bible? The real Bible, Exodus chapter 3. And uh, we'll look at verse 13. And the cool part is, it's not that hard to read. Uh, you, can probably, you can probably help a lot in the translation. So just as a group, let's, let's see, uh, let's work through it and see how far we can get. Um, Exodus 3, verse 13. And Moses said to God. Yeah, to God. And that's interesting because it's the God with the definite article. Here, what you see in the Greek New Testament too, don't you? Right, but this, you may say this is the anaphoric use of the article because it's the same God that appeared to him in the bush, right? And you know this in the context of um, God appearing to Moses in the burning bush. Look at Cyrus go. All right, and Moses said to literally the God in English we wouldn't put the with it, right? Because God is already definite for us. And Moses said to God, "Go ahead." Nay. Nay. Huh? That's when we should know. It is when you should know. You know it? No. No. Huh? Behold. That's right. Behold. Way to go, wifey. That's right. I'll tell you something. Hang on to her. We're a team. I. I. Okay. Ba. Okay. Let me have you think about hollow verbs. Then what? What does that look like with a vav in the middle of it? Vav. Not only a vav, but a colon vav. Go. Go. Is enter. Go in. Go, right? So here we have a cow. Perfect. 3ms. Okay. So Moses says to God, Behold, I, well, I'm sorry, it's one CS. I go. I'm going. I'm going. To. Bene. Bene Israel. House. Oh, no, no, no. Let me buy it. <coughs> That would be Beit Israel's sons. Okay. Behold, I am going to the sons of Israel. Now, why did I say the sons? Why do I put an article in there? Is there one in Hebrew? No, there's not. Okay, there's not. If there were, instead of a Shiva under the Beit, you would have... Um, well, something like going to Ha. ha. You actually, you'd have Ha B'nai Yisrael. But why don't you need the article for it to be definite? Because there's only <coughs> one group of sons of Israel. Mm, that could be it, but there's something else. There's a grammatical reason. Israel's definite. Israel's definite, so it's in construct with Israel, a definite noun. So uh, any noun in construct with a definite noun is, is definite. Or with a, sorry, with a proper noun is definite. Right? <coughs> so. You don't have to say sons of David because David is a particular person, right? So you can say the sons of David. It's not just sons of David, it's the sons of David. All right. So, and Moses said to God, Behold, I am going to the sons of Israel. Keep going. And to and say, I will say. I will say. I will say. Now, why is it I will say? Because it's oh. Cal perfect. Cal imperfect. Cal perfect with a reversing Cal Bob. Perfect. So, I will say. Lahem. Huh? To them. to them. You see it? Lamed, the preposition, and him is a uh, two M P, second masculine plural, predominant suffix, right? In the preposition. So I'm going to the sons of Israel, and I will say to them, Hello, hi, avotekem. Mm hmm. Right. You, you're not relaxed, are you? you got to relax. Hello, hello, hey. I should say, I think I pronounced that wrong. Hello, hey. 
It is God. Um, it is Elohim. But why isn't it Elohim? No, construct? Construct. There we go. Remember our construct endings? Right? Um, the the uh, masculine plural goes from em to a, and the feminine singular goes from uh, a hey to a tav, right? That's, those are the changes. That's what we have. So this is, um, I'll say to them, the god of Avote Ken. Your fathers? Absolutely wonderful. Yes, now, let's. let's uh, Let's tear it apart. Where do you get your fathers? Um, of his father. Go ahead. And the chem gave me a huge. Uh, there you go. The chem, and it's the type two because you got the yoke before it, right? <laughs> so the, the chem uh, is a two uh, M. M- right? P. Oh, yeah, plural. Because it's plural. plural. That's right. Um, what's the oat? Construction of you. Good guess. Uh, vote. Plural? Plural. That's right. Remember, uh, father has an irregular plural. It's a masculine noun, <coughs> father, but it has a feminine looking plural. A uh, vote. Right? Remember that? Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So, a vote taken. So, um, I will say to them, um, the God of your Fathers shalach me. Actually, it's shalachani. How's that from sent? Shalach from sent, right? <coughs> okay, so how are we going to parse this? First of all, um, is there a knee ending on a verb? Blank, a, ta, t, t, u, ten, ten, nu. Yeah, tol, tick, tol, tick, tol, tick, toli, ek, tol, yik, tolu, tick, tolna, tick, tolu, tick, tolna, nick, tol. No. Okay, there's an e ending, but not a ni ending. Ni. <laughs> From the night, so that much part of the night, the same ni. Um, there is not a ni ending, so what could that be? Pronominal suffix. Right. So here we have the object of this verb given to us in a pronominal suffix. So now, let's look at the verb itself. How are we going to parse that? Cow perfect. Cow perfect. 3 ms Plus uh, 1 C S. Right? From Shalak to Sin. So, uh, the God of your fathers, what? Sent me. Sent me. Uh, all they can. To you. To you. Very good. Now, I'm so happy because look at all you, all you guys just pounced on that. Um, and that's similar to what we had in the quiz, right? Him? Huh? Right? Similar to what we had in the, in the only we had a 3MS uh, suffix then, so it was uh, alive. But the, uh, the vowel points are different here, and you still pounced on that, so that's awesome, right? So, uh, and I will say to them, okay, so good. Let's start at the beginning of the verse then. Um, Moses, and Moses said to God, Behold, I am going to the sons of Israel, and I will say to them, uh, The God of your fathers sent me to you. Now, there's the Atnach, so that's a, you know, kind of a pausing place there, isn't it? All right. All um, right. Va'amru we. What do you think Amru is from? Amar. Amar. So let's parse it then. Blank. A ta t. U ten ten nu. Blank. A ta t. U. There it is. U. Right. So, <coughs> I just did the perfect ending, so if that fits, it must be a perfect, right? And it looks like a cal perfect, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Cal perfect, even though the bell points are odd, but we know that bell points get odd in that word. Um, cal perfect, uh, three C P from Amar, plus 
the Vav, plus reversing Vav. So what's it, what, how are we going to translate it? They will say to me. They will say to me. You see that? All right. And they will say to me, Ma, what? What? Shemo. Name. Name. Uh, so what, and then you have to supply a verb of being, what is, but there's a, it's not just name, it's, it's something else with name. No. Yeah, what's the O? Your. Is. 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 That's right, three M's. Yes. All right. And they will say to me, what is his name? Ma? What? What? Omar? I say. That's right. What will I say? Cal imperfect. Now, something weird is going on here. What is it? Well, if we wanted a Cal imperfect 1CS, we would want a preformative of what? Yik. No. <laughs> just yik. 1CS. Well, 1CS. That's the Name. That's plural. Act. Alpha. 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 Yeah. Alpha. Sorry. Alpha. Alpha. <laughs> I still struggle with that. Don't so you'd want an olive, right? Um, and the word starts in what? Olive. So are you going to have two olives in a row? Not likely. So what happens? The performative in the first yeah. in the first letter kind of they do it does you might look at it as it doing double duty, right? And so this is actually a cal imperfect one C S from an R to say. Um, so uh, what will I say to them? to them? Okay, good. So there's verse 13. All right. And Moses said to God, Behold, I am going to the sons of Israel. And I will say to them, The God of your fathers sent me to you. And they will say to me, What is his name? What will I say to them? Now, what's odd about that? Um, we don't know the God. God. Well, up to this point, we don't know the name of God. Up to this point in the Bible, in all of the book of Genesis, in all of the first two and a half chapters of Exodus, we've never been told the name of God. But we can still, though we have identified enough to the point where we can say that is God. Well, we can call him God, but well, that's I've never been name. told his name. That's just who he is. So why are they interested in his name? Hmm. Was, it, was it never a question? Well, maybe there, maybe you know the time they spent in Egypt with all of those gods, and they all had names, right? Maybe that's why they want to know. But evidently, God is ready to reveal his name. This is the first time in human history, at least that we know of, right, where God reveals his name to human beings. This is the first time in the Bible, the very first time in all of the Bible. We've got, all the book of Genesis does not have the, the name of God in it. Isn't that amazing? And here, for the very first time in the Bible and in recorded human history, we are going to see and hear the name of God. So w- what is God's response? In other words, Moses is saying, I, I, I would like to know your name because... I suspect they're going to ask me what your name is. Uh, in other words, as a validation as to whether or not I've actually met with you. As a validation as to whether or not you're actually sending me. Right. If he has not revealed his name before, then why doesn't he just... What, what matters? What, what does it matter? Because he can tell them any name. Because if... Does that make um, sense? Yeah, it does. But he tells them the right name, and maybe just in that it's self-evident when you hear the name, when you see it. Right. So read verse fourteen. Yomer uh, Elohim El Moshe. What is that? God said to Moses. God said to Moses, Echye Asher Echye. Now, what is Echye? Okay, it's from Haya, so it's a cow. Imperfect, one CS from Haya to be. So, 
Um, now, this is something you can, you can really meditate on and have to translate this, right? I will be who I will be. Or, I am who I am. Or, I am what I am. Okay. So that's kind of interesting. I mean, I imagine what might be going through Moses' head at this point. And why would you possibly translate it what I am? You know, it's a possibility of what I share. Okay. Vayomer um, Ko Tomar Libne Israel Echye Shalakani Alekin. So, and God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Ko, thus, Tomar, Tom. Huh? Yikto, Tikto, Tikto, right? Two, two, amen. Thus, you will say, la, really live nay, right? To the sons of Israel, I am. I am. Sent me. Sent me to y'all. To y'all. All right. Verse fifteen. By Yomer, owed Elohim, El Moshe. Said, owed, still yet, again, and he continued saying, you might say, <laughs> or something like that. And God said yet again, or God and God spoke yet again to Moses, um, what? Ko Tomar. Thus, you will say, you will say to the sons of Israel. And now here we have. Um, we pronounce it Adonai if we're reading the Hebrew text. But we have Yahweh. And remember, the vowel points on this are wrong on purpose, so you will not pronounce it. All right? Um, just, uh, thus you'll say to the sons of Israel, Yahweh, go ahead. Okay, Eloha, Elohe. God of Avotekin, God of your fathers, Elohe, God of Avraham, God of Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Jacob, no, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Yaakov, Jacob, Jacob, God sent me to you. Sent me. To you. Now it's very interesting. When God says His name, He says, "I am." When we say His name, how would you parse Yahweh from Haya? If you were going to parse it, how would you parse it? Third masculine singular. So when we say God's name, we say, "He is." He is. God says it, I am. Now, after this, God says, He is. Okay. But God can say, I am. When we say the name of God, we agree with that. He is. He is. Isn't that something that the name of God is? He is. Why? Because God is the ground of all being, isn't He? Right? God is the ultimate being, the, the source of all being, the ground of all being. And so it's, it's fitting. Not only that, um, where's God going? Nowhere. God's not going away. God will always be. He is. Right? Um, why is it his covenant keeping name? Yahweh is God's covenant keeping name. Why is that? Because he is always present. He's not leaving or going away. 
So he's always there to keep his covenant. <coughs> God's guarantee is as good as his being because he's not going anywhere. So what does the end of this verse say? Um, Um, I'm trying to catch up with myself here. Okay, sent me to you, uh, Zat. This. This. Shami. His name. Folks, these names. Folks, his name, but what's E? What's the E in me? My. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, Got to add a. Um, Got to add a verb of being. This is my name, La Olam. <coughs> Forever, and this is um, Zikri. Remember, now, this is. Hmm? is that, well, what is Zakar, a verb? Do you remember? It means I remember. Well, Zikri, Zikri, I don't know if you can remember that, uh, means a remembrance. So this is a noun from that verb, or a memorial. Right? So this is my memorial, Lador Door. What is door? Do you know that? Door's generation. generation. So Lador Door is what? Third generation. Yeah, you division of generation or two generation after generation or whatever. All right, so this is his memorial name. Yahweh is his memorial name, which he will be remembered by. Right, because he just always is. So I think it's quite remarkable that we've gone more than one book of the whole Old Testament and we've never seen the name of God, as much as it occurs in the rest of the Bible. I mean, we see it already in Ruth, right? Um, But here uh, we see God revealing his name to Moses at the burning bush for the very first time. Pretty amazing stuff. Uh, And the cool thing is now you have seen with your own eyes uh, the very text that Moses wrote um, retelling the event of God for the very first time revealing his name to humanity. I think that's pretty cool to be able to actually look at that as it was right there. Pretty nifty. All right. A little work in the grammar now. We are on chapter <coughs> 20, aren't we? Page 235 in the grammar. Cal infinitive construct. We've talked about the Cal infinitive construct or the infinitive construct um, already, but here we have it. All right, you ready? Introduction. In Hebrew, there are two infinitive forms. The infinitive construct, the infinitive absolute. What we're talking about here is not the infinitive absolute. It is the infinitive construct. Next chapter, we'll talk about the infinitive absolute. Infinitives are verbal nouns. You remember that from Greek, right? So an infinitive is, is a hybrid, and so it has some characteristics of verbs and it has some characteristics of nouns. It can be used more or less like a verb. It can be used more or less like a noun, right? Now, in English, uh, our infinitive sounds like this. To, well, to walk, to read, to speak. So we put that little word to on the front of an infinitive. All right? Now, it's not quite so simple in Hebrew. That isn't a bad starting place, however. If you see an infinitive, <coughs> turn to translation. Um, so, katol, as we see in that box right there, <coughs> um, what would that mean? Well, you could say to kill. Right. Now, is that always going to be a good final translation for an infinitive construct? No, but it's a good starting place in terms of understanding. All right. So the form of the infinitive construct is what you see right there. Um, and so the uh, diagnostic aspects of it are a uh, shiva under the first root letter and uh, their stem vowel is a colon. Remember that term, stem, uh, the uh, stem vowel? Is a colon. <coughs> colon. Um, now, you'll probably recognize that this is the same form as the 2ns imperative. Right? 
So this looks just like yik tool without the yik on it, doesn't it? And that's how you form the imperative. Remember that? How did you, how did you form an imperative? Take the performative off the second person singular and plural in perfect form, and that gives you your imperative. All right? Cohortative, you added a hey, and the gestive is the same form as the imperfect. Right. So this, now, there's only one of these, right? Infinitives, the infinitives are not inflected for um, gender or number, right? So this is the only form right there. So for the verb katal, the infinitive construct form is katol. Okay? Just like in Greek, right? What's the in present active infinitive form of luo? It's luain. That's it. Okay, now... We're going to have um, different stems, right? So we're going to have nifal and pl and hifil, et cetera, stems, and that those, you know, we're going to look a little bit different. So the infinitive construct gets to exist in all the stems, doesn't it? But it's not inflected for uh, <coughs> person in them. All right. So remember how you form an infinitive construct, right? We can see some uh, examples of them on the top of page two thirty-six, and you can read the notes on. Um, the form of it and weak verbs and all kinds of stuff. But the bottom of 237, a couple of things I want to point out uh, because one of the critical things uh, in being able to deal with um, words in your text is um, being able to look it up in the dictionary, right? So you got to be able to recognize the form. So when your vocabulary form starts with a noon, what's going to happen? What do you think might happen when the vocabulary word starts with a noon? Well, what does noon like to do? Drop out. So if you have um, nafal, naf, or, sorry, if you have oh, well, nafal or nasa, um, that doesn't drop out. Some of them do. <coughs> okay. So down at the bottom, bottom of the page, the initial noon is lost and the tab is added to end uh, as in uh, sa'at. So nasa. Right, can end up sa'at. You see that? So you need to be able to look it up and renew. Right? Okay. Um, and so here, here, here are some of these where you're going to have um, a possibility of it dropping out. Right? So nasa can can appear either way. Uh, naga can appear either way. Nata can appear either way. Um, nasa can appear either way. But nagash is only going to appear without the noon. Right? Natan can appear either way. Natan it does notorious things. Both of the noons drop out there, so you get tate, which is really weird. The note says the alternative infinitive consonant form is lost. Both its first and third root consonants is very difficult to identify. Because this form occurs over 150 times in the Hebrew Bible, it's best to memorize it as a separate vocabulary word. But just, just remember, you know, that Natan is notorious for dropping things out. Okay. Um, here again, if you have a yod at the beginning of the word, the same thing happens. Look at the chart top of page 239. Um, but it always drops out in these words. Yasha goes to. Shevet and etc. Okay, so just be aware of that. Um, now, one of the things that's going to help us is look what I did. I blew up Heinz Bar. Right. <coughs> um, one of the things that's going to help us is we're going to be having Heinz Bar right now. Right. Heinz Bar is, like, is a crutch, of course. But it's a good kind of crutch for now, right? Um, so we're going to be having Einspar. So Einspar is going to help us um, with what words we're dealing with in our text, right? Because if we had an infinitive construct um, where the noon or the yod dropped out, we'd wonder what in the world word we're dealing with, right? So having been aware of that, we see Einspar, and we, you know, if you weren't aware of that, if you didn't remember that, you could see the word with the noon or the yod, and you'd never recognize it, right? Even from Einspar. But just be aware, Einspar is telling you the words that are in that verse, right? And so that, that might help you recognize what's going on, and it's telling you some vocabulary. So with Einspar and your dictionary, you should be able to deal with it. Now, you, you might not be able to parse it yet, but you look it up in your dictionary, your dictionary is going to give you forms, isn't it? So worse comes to worse, 
With Einspar, you should be able to tell what vocabulary word you're looking at, right? And then you should be able to look it up in the dictionary, and when you see it in the dictionary, you should be able to scan through there and find the form. Now, that could take a long time to find the form. You know, if you look through the cow, and the nipple, and the pia, and find out it's a hip field, because indeed, you know, most verbs don't occur in all of those stems, right? But if you get a verb that occurs in a lot of those stems, and it's the last one, and you're looking for the form, it can take a lot of time. So it does behoove us to be able to parse as many of them as we can, or at least have an idea, right? Check, you might want to check yourself. That looks like a hip field. Let's look under the hip field. Oh, there's my form. I'm even happier when I see my verse number, right? And I know that that's what uh, the parsing is. So if I'm struggling with it, words that are very hard and cause me to struggle, here are my tools. I inspire, right? I you can probably tell what vocabulary word I'm dealing with, and it's meaning. Um, and the meaning may even be able to help me uh, determine what stem I'm in, right? Um, and I can get to my dictionary then, look at a find the form that's given in the dictionary, and be able to parse it. So without Einspar, I could be real lost on some things, right? So that's why Einspar is, is something that we really like and enjoy and value, right? So, you know, if you're working in a book like Ruth, if you happen to be working through the book of Ruth at this point in your life, maybe, for one reason or another, mm -hmm. you know, you might um, photocopy those pages out of Einstein, so you have to carry the whole book, you know, right? Um, you know, I made a couple of copies. I don't even know where my other copies are, but, you know, I could fold this a couple of times, pop it in my Bible, and I'm good to go. Right? Not a good idea. Similarly to the way we deal with the Pope in Greek, we copy those pages and stick them in our New Testament and away we go. All right. Um, now, on the bottom of page 239, um, by consonantal uh, infinitive construct form, why does that sound like an airline? Does that sound like an airline to you? Anyway, um, hello verbs, in other words. Um, here's the verbal root, shu. What's the infinitive construct? Shu. <coughs> moot. Moot. Bo. Bo. Why? Because on hollow verbs, the vocabulary form is the infinitive construct form. Remember we said that? So, uh, that makes it easier. Right? So, if you see the form, if you see the vocabulary form of a hollow verb, you know right away it is almost certainly what? Infinitive construct. Right? Now, we saw ba from Bo in the text we just read from Exodus, right? Uh, it wasn't Bo. Why? Because it wasn't an infinitive construct. If it had been Bo, it would have been what? Infinitive construct. You go. Right. Okay, very good. All right. Parsing the infinitive construct. The infinitive construct form is not inflected for person, gender, or number. When parsing, therefore, you will be required to identify only the stem, conjugation, and lexical form. So, Cal, infinitive construct, from Kitab to write. And remember, I'm asking you to add the English uh, definition of it. Okay? Um, that's fairly straightforward. Right? All right. Now, the infinitive construct with pronominal suffixes, though the infinitive construct is not inflected, the form frequently appears with a pronominal suffix that can function either as the subject or the object of the verbal idea. All right? Keep that in mind. Um, in the middle of the next paragraph, um, well, let's read the whole paragraph. The infinitive construct of the strong verb katal with the full range of suffixes is listed below. Note how the vocalization changes with the addition of the pronominal suffix. Each form now begins with a comment's katuv in a closed syllable and, and an accent. This initial closed syllable with comment's katuv is diagnostic of the strong verb infinitive construct with pronominal suffix. So what's our diagnostic of the infinitive construct by itself? It's just shiva and hola, right? But if I put a pronominal suffix on it, it's going to be comments katuf in that first syllable. So katli, um, katlaka, and etc. Okay, so take a look at those forms. Uh, typical phenomenal suffixes, type one. Uh, vocalization changes a little bit. Uh, we need to be aware of that. Okay. Now, top of the next page, 241. The infinitive construct with inseparable prepositions. Of course, um, remember, if you ever have a verbal with a preposition stuck to it, you always know it is an infinitive construct because the infinitive construct is the only verbal form that is allowed to have 
a preposition affixed to it. Right. So, if you have a bait or a conf or a lamed, uh, you may do that and you know, put it on the beginning of your infinitive construct. Okay? Doesn't change the vocalization. All right, now, negation of the infinitive construct. You're not allowed to use low or all, the two um, typical negations that we have seen. Um, you use bill T, which means no or in order not. Why? Um, I think that's back down to the thing that um, just because it needs to be tough to be a pastor. You know, because if it were very easy, everybody would want to do it. Or alternately, you can say it's their language, they get to do whatever they want. Um, this is just describing it. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Why? <laughs> um, ooh, that's, it doesn't seem necessary, does it? We'll, we'll, uh, we'll give it to them this time. At this time only. Alright, so that's the negation for an infinitive construct. Alright? Um, uses of the infinitive construct. And it says it's difficult to translate. Um, we'll go through some of the uses of the infinitive construct. Um, you might have um, purpose, intention, or result. Um, it's often very difficult, as we saw in Greek, to distinguish between purpose, intention, or result. Uh, because, uh, well, what's the difference between purpose and intention? Um, What's the difference? Well, per, there's a difference between purpose and result, but a lot of times, um, if my purpose comes true, I get the result, so it's all one and the same, right? Um, but in any case, that's, that's the first use of the infinitive construct. So, in the first example, to see. Now we see ra'ah. See that? Now that's a, that's a weak verb, and hey is going to drop out, so it's rage all of hey normally, right? And instead of a hey, I get a tom. Now, unfortunately, oat looks like a feminine ending, but it isn't here. The tav is in place of the hey, and the holon vav is just a long spelling of the holon. Sometimes I can get a holon vav spelling instead of just a holon, right? Um, so, uh, la rote is infinitive construct, but I know it has to be infinitive construct. I can, I can recognize ra'a there fairly easily, right? Resh, al, hey. And the lamad on the front of that is a dead ringer. It's an infinitive construct, right? So, to see the nakedness of the land, um, you came. So, that's purpose, intention, or result. Secondly, on the next page, uh, inceptive. Um, that means the beginning of an action. So, um, it's very interesting that in this case you, you have via he. Now, what is via he? Uh, that's a reversing valve on uh, the word haya in the imp imperfect form, imperfect reversing valve. So, uh, vayahi hashemesh, what is shemesh? Sun, um, labo. So, and it came about the sun to toward to go, literally. Can you see that? Lamed, toward, right? Uh, toward to go. So the sun is moving toward going. You know, what's a good English translation? The sun set. was about to set. Uh, what happens when the sun goes? It sets in English. Can you see how that works? All right. So the in incepted, it's about to. The gate was about to shut. Um, all right. It could be used as a verbal noun. In this use, the infinitive construct functions like a noun, often as the subject or object of the verbal idea. Uh, it may or may not be prefixed with a preposition long. So, um, behold, um, Shemoa, we get our furtive pontoff there, don't we? You see that? Um, with our I in. Uh, behold, uh, to Shema, to hear, to obey, in this context, to obey, to obey, and <coughs> now um, I have. Mizevak. What, what would that be? Sacrifice for bulk. All right. Um, zevak means sacrifice, and then you have the min attached to it, so you get me, right? Um, what is that? Well, that's the comparative min. So to obey 
than sacrifice to is better, right? So to obey is better than sacrifice. Now, can you see the construction? The thing that the thing that um, tips you that you have a comparison here is the min on the sacrifice. Um, now, don't confuse this with mis misbeah, which is a vocabulary word meaning what? Alter, alter, right? So, but the vocalization is different here. Now you can see why alter and sacrifice are similar in respect, right? Related words. All right. But in any case, it's a verbal noun. Um, in other words, what's the subject of the sentence? To obey, right? That's an infinitive construct in this sentence. Okay. Uh, complementary infinitive, another use of the infinitive construct is to explain, clarify, or complement a preceding action or statement that may or may not be prefixed with long. So <clears throat> let's look at uh, the second example. Right? Um, Valo Hayita, right? And you were not Ka of D, so Evid is servant, and E is a 1CS pronominal suffix, right? Uh, so, Kaf on the front of that is a uh, preposition. So, you were not like my servant. you get that? You understand that? You were not like my servant. you understand how we get that, Tim? Okay. See, Kaf D, what is the vocabulary word there? Evid, right? Servant. Servant. Okay. I have a one CS suffix, my servant. Okay. I have an inseparable preposition, ka. Like. Like my servant. Okay. Good. Okay. You were not like my servant, David, who obeyed mitzvotai. What's that? Commandments. My commandments. All right, who obeyed my commandments, and who halak walked after after me? Because we have a one CS on Ashar there, right? See it? Who walked after me in all his heart, lav or lavav, right? And we have a three MP suffix there. So this is full of suffixes, isn't it? Grammatical suffixes. Who walked after me in all his heart? Um, what is la'asot? Well, there's our infinitive construct, right? What's the vocabulary? I have this oat ending again. How, what happened? What happened before when I had an oat ending? Uh, something changed to a top. A hey changed to a top. So, what vocabulary word do I have here? No. Asa. Asa. What does Asa mean? Build. Huh? Is that build? To or do, to do, to, do to work, to make something like that, right? So to walk after he he walked after me in all his heart to do rock only ha yashar. What is yashar? Righteousness. Upright or rightness, right? To do only the right thing by a nine. In my eyes. In, yeah, there's a one CS suffix on there. See it? In my eyes. All right, well, here, the infinitive construct to do is complementing, you know, uh, he walked after me in all his heart. He, but first of all, you know, he. He um, kept my commandments, and he walked after me in all his heart. Did I say Shema for Shamar? Because I think I might have misread that. It's not he obeyed, but it's he kept to guard, right? Um, and so this is explaining. This is explaining, uh, further defining what it means to, to keep my commandments, to walk after me in all his heart. Um, what does that mean? To do only the upright thing in my eyes. You see that? So that's complementary. Okay, I'll go over the how we picked up the O ending here. All right. In, uh, okay, the vocabulary word is asa, ayin, which means to make. Hey, means to make. Right. Okay. Okay. 
the hay gets replaced with a tongue. Okay, we see that other places too. Okay, and so the typical um, the typical form of an infinitive construct is shiva under the first root letter, right? That and a colon after the second one, right? Well, here I, I, all I have is a colon after the second one, but it's spelled in long form, colon ball. Okay. So, oh, okay. And the tav just replaces the hey. Okay. Because I, I guess I don't want to have just a. a but you wouldn't tongue. translate it, make. You would better translate it to do. To do. Okay. Because it means do or make, right? So to do only the upright thing in my eyes. Well, the upright thing is not a good English translation. But the English translation he gives is uh, with all his heart by by doing. Only what was right in my eyes. So I translated just as an English infinitive, right? But he's he's showing that it complements. He he guards and he walks by doing. Kind of interesting verse, really, for you know, defining walking after God is, means do what's right. That's kind of interesting. All right, and then temporal. Um, all of the above uses relate to the construction of the infinitive construct with the prefix long. But now we turn to another very common use of the infinitive construct when you prefix either the base or the comp onto it, and it means when or while. All right. Um, middle of that next paragraph. Um, note the two possible translation values: one denoting action completed when he heard, and the other indicating action not completed when he hears or when he will hear. In the absence of context, the phrase can be translated either way. So it can be either past, basically, or present, or more accurately, it can be a perfective kind of action or an imperfective kind of action. Um, And so the the first example, um, and it came about when Israel dwelt uh, in the land, in that land, ha he. So, and it came about when. Now, what's our infinitive construct? construct? Um, Bishkon. So, I have Shikon, which is my typical spelling for an infinitive construct, and the bait on the front of it. And so that means, literally, um, in the dwelling. Right? Um, we have a very similar construction in Greek with N with the infinitive. Um, for example, in the parable of the sower. Um, and curve out when I, uh, so about so and when he was so in toe with the infinitive right? so that's big with the infinitive cough with the infinitive as so you can see in dwelling or as dwelling it's still a temporal thing right a time a time issue okay. that makes sense alright cool page 247 vocabulary We got through, like, the hard part for tonight. All right, so we have achaz, to seize. We have tamay, to be unclean. We have yatsar, to form, shape, fashion. Um, Noose, to flee. Naga, to touch or reach. Savav, to turn around or surround. Safar, to write, count, or number. Uh, Shavar, to break. Samak, to rejoice. That's a verb. The noun form of that is feminine form. Simka, for joy or rejoicing. Does that ring any bells? Simka. Simba. No, no, no. no. Simba. 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 No, Simka. Remember Taxi? You ever watch yeah. Taxi? You remember Lotka? Uh-huh. On Taxi? What was his wife's name? Simka. Simka. Lotka and Simka. What was Lotka mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know. No, that's a Hebrew word, but just 
you, you do see evidence of huh? Is it a movie or a show or Taxi? Oh, it's a serial. You know, it's a situation comedy serial. Okay. It's on. I, I date myself. It's on TV land now, I guess. Um, <laughs> Danny DeVito. But um, if you don't think there are Jewish writers on these television shows, you're not, you don't have eyes to see. Simica, remember Lila, uh, Frazier's Lilith? I mean, oh, yeah. Lilith, yeah. Frazier's wife? The night, the night demon, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a Jewish myth, myth mythological figure. Uh, all right. Um, Avodah, service. Now, we had Evid, meaning servant, right? So that makes a little bit of sense. Um, Ada, congregation, Yachad, community or union or together at the same time. And that's a little bit like Echad, isn't it? For one. Uh, I don't know if there's an actual etymological relationship, but it certainly helps to remember the vocabulary, doesn't it? Um, and Yayin. Yeah, yeah. Yayin. That's got to be fun to say. Yayin. Wine. Yayin. Wine. Is what? Yayin. Yayin? Yeah. Is it? Um, yeah, All right. Uh, bill T, not in order, not usually appears as uh, Bill T. That was in our stuff this week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <coughs> yeah. So, a life centered on Torah, that's pretty interesting. Ezra 710, that's an awesome verse, isn't it? That's a good life verse for somebody to take in Hebrew. <coughs> Ezra 710. All right. Yeah, so, so it's just a law when you have the comments. It's comments of two. Yeah, I think that's what we're in a long story. All right, let's take ten and come back and we'll do the infinity of that. So